Hi, just a quick announcement before we start the video. Did you know that you can listen to all of the Sofa Science interviews in full, in audio form, as a podcast? It's hosted on my website, sallylepage.co.uk forward slash Sofa Science, and then you can use the RSS feed, or it's also on iTunes and whatever your favourite podcast site is, you can listen to it all there because I know lots of you like to listen to these long interviews on the go. And if you're thinking right now, why Sally, what a beautiful website you have there. How, what an amazing user interface and even looks good on mobile. Well, funnily enough, I've been using Squarespace for years now to host and design my website and Squarespace is sponsoring this video. Oh, you never saw that one coming. So yes, this video is sponsored by them and it's great because like I say, I've been using them for years because I can really rely on it being a good looking website regardless of the platform, particularly mobile. And as more users of the internet are using mobile rather than desktop, that is super important to me. I can host my podcast on there using the blog feature. If I ever want to sell merchandise, I can set up a shop on my website. It can cope with multiple demands mains it's just so easy and because i'm not so good on the coding side of things it makes things really easy to update as well and as this is a sponsored video if you use squarespace.com forward slash sally lepage you get 10 percent off your first purchase plus you can also just try it out for free see if you like it if you don't you've not paid anything and by using the link squarespace.com forward slash Sally LePage, they know that you come from my channel, so I get some more money to make more videos like this. You get money off, and it's just a win-win, really. So enjoy, and let's get on with the interview. And we are back, still at VidCon, doing a sofa science on a sofa. <laughs> just prepare yourself, because there's not going to be more sofa sciences on sofas for a while. It's, it's a running <laughs> joke that I, I call it sofa science, and there's never a sofa around. And then you're around. out in the world. Like, yeah, it's, it's, it's terrible. <laughs> so I am joined today by Caitlin Hofmeister. Hello! So the first questions, all the first questions go. Who are you? Introduce yourself to my audience. Um, hi, Sally's audience. Um, I'm Caitlin Hofmeister. I am the senior producer of SciShow. And so I work with a team and produce 13 videos a week uh, about anything that has to do with science for SciShow or SciShow Space or SciShow Psych or SciShow Kids. It's been all over the internet lately. Astronomers discovered that the sun has an evil twin and that's what killed the dinosaurs, which would be an incredible discovery if it were true. These articles are based on a paper that was published last month in the monthly notices of the Royal Astronomical Society, where researchers predicted that every star could have started with a partner, like in a binary star system, and that most pairs just split up as time goes on. Which means that our very own sun might have a long lost sibling out there somewhere in the Milky Way. 13 videos a week yeah. is insane. I don't, I don't do 13 videos a week all by myself. Okay. I have a team of awesome people who, cool. who helps me. Yeah. Before we start I talking help. about what? It's like now, how did you get started doing all of this? I, so I went to graduate school, film school at University of Montana in Missoula. Okay. And when I was graduating, my friend Amber was doing graphics for some guy named Hank. And I, and she was like the only girl working there besides Hank's wife, Catherine. And so she was like, hey, you should come check it out. Mm -hmm. And we need an editor. And so I started editing videos for um, SciShow. Had you, when you joined film school, what was kind of the goal that you'd had in mind? The Good question. So I went, the reason I went to U of M is because at that time it was like 20, it was 2009. Um, and there weren't like, YouTube wasn't super big yet. So it was like every film school you had to either direct or do cinematography or write. And I kind of wanted to do all the things. And so University of Montana was like digital filmmaking. And it was like, okay. learn all the things. So it was like, they didn't really know it at the time, but they were prepping people to go into YouTube. Yes. And so um, so I wanted to do like low budget narrative filmmaking. Um, but I paid for school by, um, by going into debt and uh, by working at libraries. Like I worked at the university library and the okay. public library. And so I just got really... And I've always loved libraries and I worked in them in college yeah. and stuff too and I just loved sharing information and I wanted to make videos so like YouTube science education videos was a good kind of fitted like, yeah and did you have much of a science background up to that point not really yeah I have a degree in philosophy and creative writing okay. and then now filmmaking and um but I I love science I just was like I can't I, I'm not going to be a scientist That's but fine. I love yeah sharing about it and learning about it. And it's so something it's, you've been interested exactly. in at that point. Yeah, exactly. So your friend tells you about this random dude called Hank. <laughs> 
And so was he applying for editors at that point? Yeah, so he had an editor that was leaving, um, and so they were looking for someone to take his place and just edit SciShow videos. And so I met with um, Nick Jenkins, who I already knew, who's the director of Crash Course, Mm -hmm. and um, Blake DiPastino, who is the head writer of all the content coming out of com- what's now called Complexly, which is Hank and John's companies. Okay. And um, so I met with them and hit it off um, with them and then met with Hank. And we had, like, Missoula's a small town. We had, like, friends in common and stuff. So we just were like, okay, cool. Like, mm-hmm. and I think the first thing he asked me, he was like, are you crazy? And because uh, he was, like, casting for Lizzie Bennet Diaries at the time and, like, working with a lot of actors. And he was like, everybody's a little bit crazy, but I want to know how crazy you are and I was like I, and that's I, he was just like are you crazy and I was like well I probably you know <laughs> like and so we just like hit it off and so then I started editing um and how big was the team at this point when you joined it was like that was the team it was Hank and I didn't meet Michael Gardner at the time but um Michael Gardner who's now the like COO of VidCon was like Hank's assistant okay. and then Blake Nick Amber Catherine and Michael Aranda. And so that so was still it. pretty small. Yeah. Yeah. We have this like table in the office that um like we used to have like all all staff meetings around and it was just like six of us or whatever, like sitting around the table. That must be pretty nice though. Yeah, yeah. And we still have that table, which is really cool. cool. We have meetings around it, but now we're all like trying to get around it with like a small team. So And you started off editing the videos. Mm-hmm. How did it progress from there? So oh. then we started doing um we wanted to do SciShow Talk Show, which is, like, kind of like this. Like, like very yeah, similar to this, yeah. yeah. And so, um, we, the first way we did it, um, we shot, like, nine of them in one day, which we thought was a really great idea, and now we do, like, two or three a day. Like, they're exhausting. But we did nine. So is it a, a bad idea because of the... Uh, exhaustion and the amount of energy that goes into it or for another reason so that okay. yeah that it was just like we started to get, it was a blast like we just started to get really loopy though towards the end of them and so we had um Jesse Knutson Castaneda is um Animal Wonders Animal Wonders yeah, yeah. And so, how you pronounce it, it? yeah yeah <laughs> um yeah I think she's Danish and her husband is Peruvian mm-hmm. and so she's Knutson Castaneda um but uh her um we had her come and, like, bring animals in for part of the talk show, and so we were like, we'll just have her come from the second half. So we filmed nine of the front half, and then with her, nine of the back half, and mm-hmm. Michael Gardner, I think, asked her to bring animals in, and he, she didn't know that she was going to be on camera. Like, that was, like, miscommunicated somehow. Yeah. Um, and so she did a great job, though, because she's a good presenter but mm-hmm. we were like I just kind of like naturally was organizing was that. she making animal wonders when she not it? Yeah. yeah she wasn't yet she had a YouTube channel I think but it was just like little like phone videos of her animals mm-hmm. doing cute stuff um and so yeah so I just kind of like started like that day um I was like keeping track of continuity because like that had been my job before I was like script supervising for films and stuff okay and so um so I think Hank was just like, oh, this is more complex, and you're keeping track of this stuff. And so I just kind of started taking that on, um, like, when we would do stuff that wasn't just in front of a green screen. If it needed, like, organization, I just started mm-hmm. doing that. Which is the job of a producer. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And so then um, we decided to add SciShow Space, and um, so it was just like we were just growing and needed somebody to keep track of it. And so then I became the producer, and then we, as we've grown... We've now Stefan Chin is the producer of SciShow and Sam mm-hmm. Schultz is the producer of SciShow Kids and I'm the senior producer of all of SciShow. And so it's just like jobs are created as you you know, like yeah. I was doing the job of producer and then we were like, Oh wait, maybe we should call me the producer, you know? Yeah. Like it's like that's how we kinda of work is that you And like I think because it's such a small team as well, you're doing what jobs need to be done. Exactly. Rather than this is my role. Yeah. I will stick to this. Yeah, yeah. And so it's and it's we have such a cool team that, like, everybody just is really cares about what we're doing. And so mm-hmm. people will take on more and more, like, in what they're excited about. And then you're like, oh, you what you're doing is not what we're saying you're doing. We yeah. need to, like, change your title so it reflects yeah. that. And day-to-day, yeah. what do you do as senior producer? So day-to-day, I have a lot of meetings and um, schedule things. Right now, we're working on, like, we have... 
integrations, and so like that takes up some time, like funding, figuring out funding. So, um, what do you mean by integrations? So like how SciShow is funded is through like ads on YouTube, obviously, and then our Patreon community, and then we also do integrations from time to time. So like right now, um, we're working with like a couple brands that feel like appropriate Mm -hmm. you know so like Hank used to be a web designer and so he can talk about web design and be like oh or if you're not a web designer you could check out Squarespace or Mm -hmm. something like that or like um, 23andMe just sponsored a couple episodes where Hank got to have his like DNA test yeah yeah yeah. and so things like that that feel like things that our audience would be interested in figuring that stuff out and it's also, also a lot of just like figuring out what the SciShow team likes and cares about and stuff and making sure that like the workflow is organized and doable and that we have all the equipment we need and things like that so it's like um a lot of like taking care of the like little bits and pieces so everybody has the stuff that they can that they need to do their job well and to do to have fun with it Mm -hmm. and then um just like kind of thinking about the big picture and making sure that everything's like going to keep moving smoothly yeah, and I think what's different about SciShow compared to people from other channels that I've had on Sofa Science is that it started off as a team. Yeah, yeah, that's And it totally. wasn't just one person who's then grown into a team. It right. was like, no, this is going to be its own brand, regardless of if Hank is a presenter or not. Yeah. It wasn't just Hank thinking, I'm going to start making some science videos now. Yeah, yeah, so, th- so the history of SciShow is that YouTube... What, like saw that Vlogbrothers was like doing consistent stuff and they were like hey you guys should do more so they pitched Crash Course and SciShow mm-hmm. and they both were like yeah we'll give you like a little bit of like grant seed money to get started That um, so basically how that worked is that the first year all the ads I think this is right I can't quite remember but all the ad money we earned on those videos just went right back to YouTube and paid mm-hmm. them off yeah. that like loan basically but then that started us up so that we could, like, buy a camera and yes. computers and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. And do you make all the decisions about what topics you're going to cover when you start new channels and projects and what brands you work with? Do you make them as a team or that set this person makes these decisions and whatnot? It's, to- it's like, really team-based. And then, like, and it's re- Hank is really involved in a lot of that stuff, too. And so, like, topics that we want to cover, like, so we have um, four head writer people that edit and like organize things and then they work with about 15 freelancers who have Mm -hmm. science degrees or like just like strong like um science journalism um skills and so they we ask like the freelancers to pitch us on ideas and then I think like we're trying to do it every other month but then like with VidCon and things like it it gets a little wonky but Um, but we all, like, as a huge team, like, come, we'll, we'll come together and, like, pitch each other on ideas and, like, brainstorm and stuff like that and then try to shop those ideas out to, like, who's going to be the best writer for this and mm-hmm. stuff like that. And so um, so that's pretty um, collaborative. And then, like, for starting new stuff, um, like, we started at SciShow Psych in March this year, and that was, like, we wanted to do that or, like, life or bio or health, and we asked our Patreon patrons to Mm -hmm. vote and so um and they picked psych so that was like really fun because we were like we like all these ideas but yes we'll do like we want to do what Mm -hmm. what people want and what they felt like there was a like a hole for and so we started SciShow psych because our patreons our patreon patrons picked it have you found that interesting working with patreon because so basically, Lindsay Doe from Sex Nations yesterday was like, Sally, just so I have a Patreon page that isn't public. Although by the time this video goes it's not up, public. Like, so just, like, I've made it, it but, but I've not it. pressed go. Gotcha. Yeah. And uh, Lindsay's like, for God's sake, Sally, just let them pay you for the work that you're doing. And I'm like, but no, but what if it go? Like, I can't give them enough back. It's like, they, they want to pay you. Them. Yeah. By the time this video goes up. It should be public. Cool. I think. Tell, tell me when it's public. Okay, uh, yeah, I will do. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But how do you find that in the kind of? Because they are like your super fans. They are the people who are going to con- contribute to you financially. Yeah. So it's interesting that you are involving them in the discussions with them. Right, because that's how I feel about it. Is that they're they're contributing financially, 
but I want them to contribute like with like help us with decision making like it's it almost feels like they're like our board of directors or mm-hmm. something and so it's like I want them to feel really involved in like the way SciShow is going you know um, and it was terrifying to me at first like I as like side jobs in school I would like help people run Kickstarter campaigns and things like that and it feels like super vulnerable yes. to be like hey will you give me money for this project that I'm going to make that I'm really in love with yes um, but Patreon's really cool because it's like ongoing and people can like opt in and opt out and it's really like fluid that way and so it took me a while to get used to it though and I really like I started because I it was like there are these names and they give you money mm-hmm. and then you make them a graphic or yeah. you send them a calendar or something like that and so it just like felt oddly transactional at first but then we started doing live streams um, and that was very scary because you're like I don't know like I'm on camera all the time but like to do it like it, to have like a conversation with people it was like I don't know what we're going to talk about you know <laughs> like, mm-hmm. like what do yeah. you guys want to talk about um, and was it scary but it was really awesome because then I was like started to know like who Nidriad is like who I see her name and I now started I have, yeah, like, doing some more live streams yeah. and you do get to know this, the same old faces turning up mm-hmm. or the weird usernames yeah. and the little avatar yeah yeah and it's just like I was like oh yeah like you were just as excited about this thing as I am and it starts to feel less like it does like it doesn't feel transactional it feels like community and Mm -hmm. I like really look forward to those now and we went to I've seen a couple Patreon people here and it's been awesome but we went to Boston this year a few months ago and um a lot of our like Patreon patrons who give to who are like in the live stream with us were there and it was just like it for me it was like was that the NerdCon? it was yeah and it was like it was so funny it was like I I felt like I was meeting celebrities because I'm like, oh my gosh, I see your guys' names all the time. And I see you like chatting with each other. And I was like so excited to meet them. And so it was just like, just, yeah, it's just wonderful. And you can like run ideas by your Patreon community and like get feedback. And, and they're, all, they're honest, you know, at least as far as I know. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, even like, it's, if, it's so cool because it's like, it's a great way to get funding. For sure, because I trust those guys way more than anything, because they are they get SciShow, yes. you know? And then, but it's also just, like, that community is so amazing. Um, and it's also, like, I don't know how else you do funding stuff, but it's, um, like, we had some stuff one time where people were like, well, are you just going to, like, sell your brand someday? Like, they were, like, worried that we were just going to, like, not be SciShow and be, like, bought by something else. And mm-hmm. we were like, no. Like, we would never do that. We And, like, part of it is that we have this huge, like, board of directors, our Patreon patrons, like, that, like, this is our setup. Yes. You know? And so it, like, adds, like, this, like, trustworthiness to mm-hmm. what you're doing, I feel like, too, which is really cool. You're accountable to a larger group of people. Yeah. Yeah. And outside of <clears throat> Patreon, like, your wider YouTube audience, who do you aim to reach with SciShow? Oh, that, that's a good... That's a great question. We're always trying to figure that out. Um, I would really like to reach more women. Like, you mm-hmm. and I have talked about this. Like... Um, we were on a women in STEM panel, which I recorded. I have checked. The audio worked. Yay! Yes! <laughs> so that will be up on my channel if it's not already. <laughs> At VidCon Amsterdam, the audio didn't work. There's a no. nightmare. Um, what did you do? Did you share the footage and just do voiceover still? Or did, were you just like... No, th- there's only one panel where the audio didn't work. Okay. And so I just haven't uploaded that one, unfortunately. Gotcha. Um, I think they might have recorded it, though, like the, the team. Uh, probably. So I need to yeah. get in contact yeah. with them. But the Women in Science one from Amsterdam is up on my channel. Already. Cool, cool. Um, yeah, so... Um, who who your audience are? Oh, yeah. It's kind of like... We, like, aim... To, at like lifelong learners who maybe don't necessarily like consider themselves lifelong learners like mm-hmm. I, I think our audience really does like they know that they're interested in science and that they are smart yes. which is awesome and so but I think we try to not just like reach out to people who are like I love science like we want people who like I think everybody loves science mm-hmm. they just maybe don't 
know it, yes. you know, and they're like curious about things. And so, um, so we tried to reach out to people who are just like want to learn things and like crave knowledge and like fun facts, even, mm-hmm. you know, um, and like to think about things like a little more deeply. And yeah. so, and it kind of depends, like, we have a bunch of different kinds of episodes. Um, so, and we have like SciShow Kids is aimed at kindergarten, early elementary school. Yes. Um, SciShow, like, we have, like, SciShow Talk Show and SciShow Quiz Show, where those are kind of aimed more at our, like, core audience. Like, those don't get tons of views, but it's, like, we are funny and weird and, like, have scientists on to talk to and stuff like that. So it's the people who want... I see, it's the people behind the science as well. Exactly. And showing that scientists are people. Exactly, yeah. And then, but we also have, like, why, like, the truth about redheads, and, like, why are, like, so many fencers left-handed, and Mm -hmm. things like that, that are just kind of make you, like, huh, I never really knew that I wanted to know about that, Mm -hmm. you know? And do you find that you do have quite a different audience between the different channels of SciShow? Um, between the different channels, for sure the kids one, and a little bit the psych one. I think Space and, and Prime are really similar, but I think that's just because they've both been around longer. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think. And who, so that's who you want to reach. Is that who you are reaching? Are they the same group of people? So that's, yeah, I think that's who we are reaching. Okay. Like, I would love to reach, like, more women. I would love to reach more people internationally um, and figure out a way to, like, do like, really solid translations of the stuff that we're doing. And most of them American audience, then? Yes, yeah, American and British and Canadian, like, English-speaking. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And what is your gender split for audience? Because we were talking about this a bit on the panel. Yeah, so I think on space, I should have looked it up right before I came over. On space, it's, um, like, 90% men, 10% women. Um, Diana from Physics Girl, though, like, recommended that we, like, break down the age group and I haven't done that yet yes. and I need to um, and then on SciShow it tends to be like 80 to 83 percent men um, and then uh, SciShow Kids is pretty evenly split but a lot of that's like on the app so it's hard to okay. tell and I was going to say then, with the kids thing you don't really know exactly what the kids are like because it's their parents account exactly yeah and so um, and then SciShow Psych is I think I think it definitely skews male, but I can't remember exactly. It is a little bit more female. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And are there any like topics that you found that change that, or hosts, or styles? Because that's one of the interesting things is that you have these different, slight different formats yeah. that you can compare between. Yeah. Um, for the most part, between hosts, it doesn't really change all that much, mm-hmm. like the percentages. But um, but a cro- like um, the different videos, like it's. There's not, like, a pattern to it that I've found exactly. Like, we did an episode on, like, night cream and, like, how it works, like, anti-wrinkle cream and stuff. And so you would think that the algorithm would, like, aim that at women or something. But it was, like, probably maybe slightly more women watch that one, but not really. But then there's other, like, um, I think it's, like, our, like... I can't remember off the top of my head, but it's something like the CRISPR episode where you'd think, like, that's not going to, like, skew any way, 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 but then, like, a lot of women watch that one, you know? So it's, like, just hard to tell. And where does your audience come from? Because a lot of them initially will have come from Vlogbrothers. Yeah. Because I remember when it was first announced, and I was like, oh, this whole, this new Hang and John thing, let's go over. But where now does your growth come from? Like... Traffic from another channel, you mean? Yeah, like, like new yeah. audiences, because you are growing all the time. Like your channel's getting a bigger and bigger yeah. subscribership. Where do they come from? Collaborations or just from organically through the algorithm? I think it's fairly organic. Like I would like to do more collaborations. Like it's hard because we're in Missoula, mm-hmm. um, but. But you're yeah. all in Missoula. Like, I know. So many, yeah. All of our yeah. little empires yeah. in Missoula. So we do. We'll do. Um, like collaborate I guess we will like uh, I'll ask Henry from Minute Physics to be on SciShow Talk Show and stuff all the time Mm -hmm. and he's a great sport and always great about it yeah um and so yeah so probably from that but I think like Henry and Hank have been friends for so long that their audiences definitely know each other you know and it's interesting because it is in the last few years probably since like 2013 like it's um 
a lot more people are finding it through other science channels, I think, or through even, even like, um, like lifestyle media channels Mm -hmm. um, because we do such a wide array of topics um, that like we still have a really strong like nerd fighter community within SciShow but it's not as strongly nerd fighter as it had once been like it's still really strong nerd fighter but it's not not as as big a proportion as it exactly yeah yeah. And you've done stuff in front of the camera, am I right? Thinking, yeah. As well as being a producer. Yeah, so I host on SciShow Space with mm-hmm. Hank and Reed Reimers. And how do you find that, being in front of the camera versus being behind the scenes? Um, it's for, it, it was really terrifying at first to be in front of the camera, um, but I wanted to do it because I wanted to know how to like help hosts out more, Like, and so just okay. I wanted to try it out. And then as like a behind the camera person I wanted to be like but I also like we wanted just to get more women on there and I was like well I can try it you know and like I knew what I was like trying to direct people to do and I'm like oh I can just do the things that I want that I'm trying to get these other people to do yeah and um the because you know people it's hard to be in front of a camera and be real Mm -hmm. like a lot of people get on and they're like um really like stilted stilted and newscastery and like newscasters are awesome but like that's not what works on YouTube yeah and so um so it was hard to like convince people to be themselves on camera and I was like oh okay I'll try and do it and figure it out Mm -hmm. um and so now it kind of feels like just the same as behind the scenes to me yeah um it doesn't feel like Performative or anything like that, you know? That's really great. Yeah. Because yeah. I think it is quite a steep learning curve as to how to be yourself on camera. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it looks easy. Like, people who are good at it, like, Hank's really good at it, mm-hmm. so you would never know that it's, like, you have to concentrate on being yourself. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's very much acting a character but that character is you yeah yeah and it's very hard to get it exactly yeah. right and some people are like really good at being another character and awful at being themselves on camera you know like that it's just like they can kind of do one or the other whereas mm-hmm. like I can't really I'm not a good actor I don't think but I can be like figure out how to be the character that is Kayla Needed, yes yeah and did you find that being on camera did help you as being a producer yeah absolutely yeah um it made me like I think I was always like a pretty patient behind the camera person with actors um or hosts and stuff but I think it made me like figure out like I always wanted to step in and like help people when they were struggling and I'm Mm -hmm. like they've got it like they just need to work it out and try it out in their mouths and like I can just be like okay let's do it again did you like that one you know and so yeah it has helped me a lot and Something like we are having more women on SciShow, and I'm really glad that I was the first one, and that I'm still on it because then I can be like, "Hey, this is what you should expect," and like I'm putting people in a vulnerable, pub- I'm putting people in a vulnerable. Pub- I can't talk. I'm You're asking people, people in a vulnerable position. Uh, yes, and I'm asking them to be like on display, really. Yeah. But I am doing that too, and so mm-hmm. it makes me feel good about that that I'm yeah. like not like shoving them out there and in what ways do you find it vulnerable um well being a woman like a normal looking woman on YouTube I don't know if you have found this but like people get mad at you for not looking like a supermodel or for talking about things that are intelligent and so I don't really understand why that is yeah. but um so that people will get angry at our female hosts for being themselves because it's like you should not be confident and you should not be educated or something I don't Mm -hmm. know what it is but um, and how do you cope with that personally um I don't know I um at first it was really hard and I would like joke about it and like try to push it down and then all of a sudden I would just like cry about it um and I did one episode where I, um, at the end, I was like, of the episode, I was like, and I am the producer of this channel, and I read all the comments, and I'm not going to wear more makeup or get, stop being on the show. And so, um, so that was good, and I got, like, a lot of support from people in that, and, um, but I 
also just like I think I just got used to it um, I think it's definitely lessened like and we um, like but I've gotten um, able to more like distance myself I'm like oh, okay this is on this person they don't actually hate me yes like, yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah often they're just yeah. having a bad day or they just yeah. want to take it out yeah yeah like yeah. That. yeah and then do you take feedback from the comments do you read the comments because I was trying to shinny on here before and she was saying that Hank could like banned her from reading the comments or something yeah. <laughs> uh oh I read all the comments okay because that's I'm a producer yeah. yeah it's not part of Shinny's job though mm-hmm. like you know and so it's like and or any of the other hosts like I think they probably do sometimes but um but they um but so I'll read them and be like oh okay like people are noticing that we all talk with our hands a lot like is it do they just hate that Olivia talks with her hands or does she talk with her hands more than Hank or Michael does mm-hmm. and then I'll pay attention to that and she doesn't talk more with her hands than Hank or Michael do. So I'm like, oh, okay, I'm going to leave it. That's a thing. They're just yeah. trying to find something to pick at her. Um, and so I do consider it for sure. And, um, I mean, I, I don't know. I think, I don't, like, things about me and how I look physically, I don't pay attention to because I don't, like, it's can't not change that much the shape change. of my yeah. ears or my mouth or my body, you know? Mm-hmm. And so stuff like that, I'm like, oh, okay, I'm just like, delete. Like, and I do the same thing for Hank or Michael, too. If people, like, try to sexualize them, it's just like, goodbye, goodbye. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, if it's, like, something about, like, the way somebody pronounces something, we actually talk about that a lot. Like, we sometimes try to change the way we pronounce things because... Um, because it's we just don't want people to get hung up on it you know like some people say Neanderthal some people say Neanderthal yeah like that's okay (laughs) the internet is full of pedants and uh, they do like to pick up it's like oh I'll just listen to the topic of the video for god's sake yeah Yeah. and how do you determine what success is for SciShow um that is a good question uh like well since we're talking about comments like Mm -hmm. if people are talking in the comments about science that successful for sure um if um like yeah it's more like kind of on an individual level sometimes too that it's like for like the video makers themselves it's like oh hey you made that awesome like animation that really like unpacked the concept you know like in that like furthered people's understanding it wasn't just like a talking head Mm -hmm. um so yeah and like growth is how we measure success like intelligent conversation is how we measure success um yeah yeah I guess what what more do you like what more do you want to know about that because it is like I suppose some people think is it the view count or is it the number of subscribers Mm -hmm. is it the number of comments the shares the engagement and yeah. is it just that I feel happy with the video myself? And so it's all, of it's all yeah. of those things, yeah. And so, because for one thing, like, we, very early on, like, every video, like, is going to be monetized differently. Every video is going to be viewed differently, shared differently. And often, like, the videos you spend the most time on don't do as well, you know? And the yeah. ones that you're like, oh, I don't know about this video, that one does really, really well. Yeah. And so you can't measure success just by that and like that's why we like our talk shows are a ton of work and they don't get a ton of views and they don't make money like so but we keep doing them because it like deepens our relationship with the audience we feel like and hopefully encourages people who want to go into science to like see themselves as these scientists that we bring in Mm -hmm. and so that's really important and so um so it just depends on on the episode like if we have an episode that doesn't feel like it asks the right question or doesn't answer the question that people were expecting like like if if we get feedback on a video that's like I'm trying to think of an example um like we did a video a couple months ago that was technically not like nothing about it was wrong but it didn't like satisfy the itch that we had presented you know and so and we got that like 
we got that feedback and we're like, oh, that was not a good SciShow video. You mm-hmm. know, like that. So it's like we we didn't like achieve what we set out to do with that video. Mm-hmm. And so that was a failure. Um, so it's more like if we're like with any kind of video or narrative project, I feel like you're setting up like a promise that you're like, hey, hang with us for a few minutes and this is going to pay off. And so that's successful for us. I suppose that's the idea yeah. behind clickbait as well. Right. Is some people really like clickbait because they're like, well, I want to get people to watch the video. Right. And some people are like, oh, it's terrible. And I think the distinction is is whether you do um, satisfy that initial reason for clicking yeah. or not. So yeah. do you as a company think we're going to make very clickable thumbnails or titles or something? As, a, as part of your strategy. Yeah, we, I mean, we try to, but we want them to be honest. Yes. Yeah, yeah, because we don't want people to, like, like, I was so excited forever to do this video about aphids and how they reproduce telescopically. Like, aphids can be born pregnant because mm-hmm. they clone themselves. And I thought, that's amazing. And we were like, that is so, like, that's just, like, such a weird thing, you know? And I'm, yes. like, just excited about that as a weird thing. And so I'm like, we don't need, like, that's a weird thing. And I want people to be excited with me about that being a weird thing. Mm-hmm. Not that it's, I don't want to trick anybody to, like, learn about, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And um, what video are you proudest of? I mean, oh it's because you yeah. have so many videos. Yeah. Uh, oh, man. Um, different ones for different reasons. Mm-hmm. Like, um, like the first video I ever edited I'm really proud of The Science of Cute okay uh, that was our 73rd episode ever um, like the first like I'm really proud of like we used to do these really quick turnaround um, news ones mm-hmm. and I would that's like how I learned to do After Effects was just having to do those really fast yeah um, so but I'm also really really proud of We've noticed, like, SciShow definitely has a style, but we've noticed that, like, within our team, we can see, like, who, um, you can tell, like, who did which video. Like, we can recognize, we're like, oh, that's a Hiroka video. Like, because she always does that cool, like, animal thing. And, like, or, like, oh, that's a Sam video because he likes to use Photoshop instead of uh, Illustrator. So Mm -hmm. I can tell it's, like, a Sam character. And so, like, whenever anybody, like, on the team, like, pushes something like a little bit further like those are always end up being my favorite videos and like the reason I think that SciShow has such a like cohesive style is that then we like steal from each other Mm -hmm. and we're like I like how you did that like tell me about that so so, it's not restricting people to a a particular style but letting people explore and then incorporating that exactly yeah 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 it's definitely changed as like the team has changed and shifted and you have so many videos in the back catalog now yeah how do you make sure that you're not repeating yourself and how do you keep coming up with new ideas um, so we all have a pretty, like, um, there's no real organization to it. We just know. We're like, oh, no, we already did that. Like, if people, like, pitch an idea or, like, in the comments, if people are like, do a video about it, we're like, here you go, done. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, so we all have it, like, pretty memorized. And our content team does, too. But we will, like, update things for sure because things are changing all the time. Mm-hmm. So, like, my favorite, one of the ones, actually, I'm super proud of, which was really all on the content team, but they... Um, we did an episode about a pink lake in Australia and why it was pink. And then some scientists like went and studied it and figured out why it was pink and wrote a paper about it. That's and cool. the paper was like, we watched this SciShow video. And so then we updated and talked about their paper. Mm-hmm. And so um, so we'll re- like call back. But there's also, there's just so much to know about the world like or ask about the world that mm-hmm. it's, I don't think we'll ever run out of stuff like we and then how do you pick creatively. which stories you then turn into videos um, that's a really good question so Blake T. Pestino our chief of, chief content person he has trained all of us in that like a SciShow video is like presents you with something that you think you kind of know about and then it kind of like subverts that and you're like oh that's why you know and mm-hmm. so it's like if it's something that you're like, oh yeah, cool, that makes sense. Then that's not a very good SciShow video, yeah. you know? Or even, even if it's something you didn't know before, but you're like, oh yeah, I guess I could have figured that out. Mm-hmm. But if it's something like, oh yeah, avocados exist because giant sloths used to eat them, you know? That's like, that sounds made up, yeah. you know? <laughs> and so then it's like finding that interesting angle about it. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. And what, this is always a tricky question to answer, I'll preface it with that. <laughs> what one thing do you wish that the audience knew about you and your work that you don't think they already know? Um, about me personally or about SciShow? Anything. Okay. Um, like this is your opportunity yeah. to inform the people. Ah, uh, that's a great. That's a really cool question. Mm-hmm. Um, you can take it whatever way yeah. you want. I one thing I do wish is that um, I know you just had like Joe Hansen in here, mm-hmm. and I wish that um, people who like watch all like the same content that we watch like knew that we are a huge fans of each other, and that people would be like. Oh, SciShow, oh my gosh, Michael Stevens just ripped you off. And we're like, there's no way he did. Like, mm-hmm. we worked on this episode for six weeks. He probably did too. And yeah. we, you know. I like, think that's the thing with educational as well. Yeah. It takes so long to make a video yeah. that we're definitely going to end up making the same yeah. video with yeah. each other. Yeah, and then we're like, oh my God, I, like, I wish that we would have, you know, like, I'm such a big fan of, like, all those guys that I'm like, but I think there's something sometimes, not everybody, a lot of people are, are super loving about it but I think people try to like pit us against each other and they'll be like oh Vsauce said this better or oh man you sh- the gross science did this way better and they're like oh okay like w- I can't keep up with all the stuff that they do I'll mm-hmm. check it out but it's also like I'm like they like we're not in competition like like more and more, I want more people to make educational videos and I love like all the PBS channels like mm-hmm. all the science channels like they're so good so it's just funny that I think that's I some, wish like we're not rivals like when, yeah I mean we, we yeah. spent most of VidCon hanging out with other yeah. ED YouTubers yeah it's so much like it's funny it's like coming to like a family reunion you're like yeah. once a year I get to see all these people that I just love and like and it's weird yeah. because this is my first time really at an event like this in America it's like finding out that they watch my channel yes. but I watch your channel yeah. and it's like oh, this, I can't believe this is the first time we've actually met because yeah. we've been tweeting each other for so long yeah yeah or it's funny because you'll like run into each other and you're like oh hey and then you're like oh wait you don't actually know me I just know your face yeah. really yeah, well yeah, yeah. <laughs> but no we do end up kind of just somehow gathering together mm-hmm. and hanging out and it yeah. is a really nice bunch of people yeah yeah I always feel like I come away with like whenever I get to hang out with like all the EDUers I like come away with like a list of like books I need to read and stuff yeah. like it's just like yeah so much fun because I don't know like I think you do feel it, like this at Oxford you were saying is that you're like people don't like get what YouTube is and yes. what you're doing and like in Montana in a great way a lot of times people are like what do you do what is that mm-hmm. and so but so it's so exciting to be like oh yes like you know like you don't have to explain on. the backstory you yeah. can just go straight into yeah. it yeah exactly cool yeah what is your favorite social media channel favorite what social media oh my gosh uh like platform yeah probably i'm like my twitter bio says i'm not good at twitter but i kind of love twitter i'm like falling in love with it a little bit like um i love instagram just because it's like so pretty Mm -hmm. um and just like kind of relaxing but Twitter I definitely love too because I love the um I feel like most of the people I know are so nice like and but it's fun to like see people get a little like snarky and weird and stuff you know and I feel like people do that on Twitter and it just hilarious and so you like the snark you I like, go to twitter for the snark I like happy snark okay like I don't like mean snark like my twitter name is actually snarky fern um but uh so I like the like um pointing out like ironies in the world and stuff like that and making like funny jokes at each other and stuff like that and so I'm kind of I'm liking that but I also like that then I can just like shut that off like I don't think I follow like Nick Jenkins from Crash Course used to laugh at me because I was like, Tumblr is so lovely. And he'd be like, what is your Tumblr? Like, I feel like I have a very curated, like, social media presence, like, mm-hmm. that I, like of who I follow. It's, like, people who are making, like, educational content yeah. and, like, posting pictures of their puppies and, like, then every now and then, like, making, like, a snarky comment about Greg Gianforte, the, the new congressman from Montana. And so I'm just, like, there's this, like, a perfect little balance. So... I like Twitter a lot for right. that reason and for like things like VidCon like 
I was able to connect with a lot of people that I otherwise wouldn't have, you know, Mm -hmm. like I'm a pretty private person and I'm like, I don't want to be Facebook friends with like people who are just like that I don't really know like they're nice, Facebook friends but um, it's a nice no, stage between yeah. Facebook and LinkedIn yeah exactly yeah yeah what about you what's your favorite Twitter I yeah. love Twitter my Twitter cool. audience is just wonderful cool. they're such funny people yeah they make me think, laugh all I the know. time and I think maybe that's the thing is that like people post on Twitter when they have something, something witty that, yeah but it's also and very so pithy mm-hmm. yeah and re- like smart yeah, yeah. I yeah. get yeah I get it's the really funniest fun. responses to my posts you're, awesome. you're wonderful I love you <laughs> cool thank you so much for coming yeah, and joining me cool. and go follow all the side shows and snarky fun was yeah. it on, on Twitter <laughs>